Garuda Indonesia is the flag carrier of Indonesia, a company that consistently delivers millions of people from Indonesia all across the many islands and around the world. The company was even once named as Most Improved Airline by Five Star Airline and World's Best Cabin Crew by Skytrax, after it undertook a five-year modernization plan which was initiated in 2009 and paved the way for the entire airline to withstand global competition. At its peak in 2018, Garuda Indonesia has successfully carried over 38 million passengers and a peak of over 4.5 billion US dollars in revenues by 2019, making it one of Indonesia's largest companies ever by sales. However, there is just one problem with Garuda Indonesia. On September 22, 2022, the company officially filed for US Chapter 15 bankruptcy protection, which was initiated due to the company's overall financial status that continues to deteriorate. At the end of 2021, Garuda Indonesia stated that it had sustained debts of over $9.8 billion to over 800 creditors, and in the months that followed its debt report, problems continued to to pile up one after the other. Garuda Indonesia's executive planned out strategies to help the company. Amongst the actions taken as an extension to its debt repayments, cut costs and even external assistance led by government intervention. Piles of promises, yet the executives have promised that after three years, the company will be profitable once again and be able to pay down its debts. Now, its downfall in the last few years would likely be due to COVID-19. The pandemic has rippled the tourism economy of the world after all, and it collapsed not just Garuda Indonesia into debt, but many more out there. However, was Garuda Indonesia's downfall really just about the COVID-19 pandemic, or is there more to it? The company itself has been embroiled in a number of corruption cases, so it would be possible that its collapse was due to more than one factor. And finally, will Garuda Indonesia survive through this debt and potentially mismanaged collapse? Well, let us discuss everything, starting from the very beginning. Garuda Indonesia traces its roots back to 1949, when the KNILM and Royal Dutch Indies Airways that was started during the Dutch colonization had been dissolved, and their assets were then transferred to its subsidiary, and that subsidiary was nationalized by the Indonesian government. This gave birth to Garuda Indonesia. From here on out, the airline grew. Because modernization was taking place and Indonesia's over-economy continued to flourish, more and more demand for air travel had been needed. Indonesia's domestic demand for domestic and international travel was massive because the nation itself comprises thousands upon thousands of islands and millions upon millions of people. The need for traveling from one to another was becoming crucial both for tourism purposes but also for business purposes. The 1970s to the 1990s were the decades it saw its largest and most continuous growth. It bought many new airplanes from Netherlands-based company Fokker to US-based Douglas Aircraft Company. It even became, in 1982, the launch customer for the European company Airbus. However, despite its enormous growth potential, it missed out a lot on the perfect opportunities. From 1996 to 2009 was its most turbulent years. It suffered many accidents, was under the dramatic collapse of the 1997 Asian financial crisis, and air travel was subsequently limited. Therefore, its rise was limited, and the hopes and dreams that were given to the company were crushed. However, its biggest corporate problems had not even started yet. In 2007, the company and all the Indonesian airline companies were banned from flying into European countries. It took two years from June 2007 to July 2009 before the ban was lifted. As soon as the ban was lifted, Garuda Indonesia immediately sought a massive five-year expansion plan known as Quantum Leap. This saw an entire rebranding of the company, increasing fleet size and ultimately paving for a better Indonesian airline company. And the company's plans did prove fruitful. After the company went public on the Indonesian stock exchange, it immediately was bought by big names. One of them was PT Trans Airways, purchasing over 10.9% of the company. And by 2014, it received the prestigious five-star rating from Skytrax, which at that time made it only one of the seven other airline companies. By the coming year, the company even announced its intent to purchase over 90 airlines from both Boeing and Airbus for a whopping $20 billion price. 
Therefore, its operations were not only a simple rise and fall, but a turbulent history, mixed with challenges, but also opportunities. And as the company grew its operations and fleet management, there was another problem that fell into their hands. Corruption. It was revealed that the company's executive directors in 2019 had implemented policies that harmed its employees. It was cited to be a nature of discrimination, and its main director, known as Asi Ashara, was even removed from his position on the 5th of December 2019, after he smuggled in motorcycle goods inside the country. But even after his removal from the position, news kept pouring in about Garuda Indonesia. Employees were revealing through Twitter that they had been a victim of harassment during Asi's leadership. Leadership. These were the issues plaguing the company right before the COVID-19 pandemic, controversial leadership, which was found to be illicit. Although there were consistent issues around the company, the bottom line was Garuda Indonesia still grew. The company data reveals that its passenger carried grew from 24.9 million in 2013 to over 31.8 million by 2019. But then again, one can argue that these were not enough to harm the overall company. As soon as 2020 came, however, the tourism industry started to collapse. Borders after borders were closed, both internationally and domestically. By the end of 2019, the company was reported to have over $3.7 billion worth of liabilities, $3.2 billion of which were current liabilities, meaning these are financial obligations that needed to be paid in the next 12 months. The issue was, did Garuda Indonesia have $3.2 billion to pay it down in the case of a black swan event? An event that could suddenly thrust the world into chaos. It would probably be able to pay its debts down on time since the strategies laid out were intact and it would generate enough money over the coming months from sales of tickets. But as COVID-19 has shown, their entire operations had crumbled. The company only had $1.1 billion in current assets, but further dissemination of the data shows that they actually only have $300 million worth of cash liquidity. Therefore, with debts looming in and nowhere to find the cash to pay for them, the company was starting to look shaky. By the end of 2020, the company had only delivered 10 million passengers, a huge decline from the previous year of 31 million. And further on, the annual report was that its total liabilities had increased to a whopping $12.7 billion, a huge increase from the previous year which only had $3.8 billion of total liabilities. Its current liabilities increased to over $4.2 billion as well. Furthermore, 2020 may sound bad, but due to the length of COVID-19, it then again caused distraught in Garuda, Indonesia. By the end of 2021, the total liabilities increased to over $13.3 billion, and the executives have reported that it had over 800 or so creditors, to which it owed $9.8 billion. And this debt was starting to look disastrous. It did everything it can, it cut down its employee numbers, executives took a pay cut, and the company even headed to the courts of Indonesia, asking to reschedule its debt, and in three years, they will be able to start repayments back again. Its official Chapter 15 bankruptcy protection started exactly in September of 2022. These will be standards that help Garuda Indonesia restructure its debt. But the issue is, even if Garuda Indonesia does fix its problems, will it soar again like before? A renowned five-star airline? The previous turbulent times had shown us that they did, but right now, things are far different than it was before. Although it may retain its status as Indonesia's flag carrier and as a five-star carrier, or it may not. What truly matters, however, is that the disasters COVID had brought had been unprecedented. Most often we can blame COVID-19, yes, indeed that unforeseen event played a huge part in it. However, we must also not forget that the company even to this very day continues to battle corruption. In June of 2022, Garuda Indonesia was found to have purchased two airplanes in illicit behavior. This corruptive purchase led to a loss of over $609 million. Therefore, it might not be difficult to suggest that the fallout of Garuda Indonesia was influenced by the external problems of the world, but also as a failure of management and governance within the company. But anyway, what do you think about Garuda Indonesia? Let us know down below. Thanks for watching.